and uh, basically that's where we are we've managed to bring all the other gymnos in from other parts of the greenhouse and uh, put them all together amazingly quite well organized uh, I've got a couple of plants in this particular video which aren't gymnos and that's just because that's the way the spacing worked out so there's a uh, I'll try not to draw attention to them because they'll feature in uh, in other videos at other times. But, uh, there's a large uh, homolocephalic Texensis in the middle uh, which we'll pretend isn't there because uh, as I've just said we talk about that elsewhere. But there we are, there are the, uh, the 25 or 26 I think it was gymnos that came from Piotr and uh, they're all together now and we've brought in, as I've just said, all the other gymnocolisiums that we already had that have arrived recently from uh, Knobs and Blobs and from a couple of uh, excellent growers in Hungary and also in Poland. I don't know what the, the best angles are to, uh, to show you these plants. You'll probably be able to hear the, the rainfall behind me. So I'll ca ca try and keep this really, really brief. And um, what we would need to do is to take individual pictures now of all of these plants. Uh, make sure they're all correctly identified, which is always a little bit of a challenge when you have a very large number of plants which are more or less similar. Um, and, uh, and finish this video as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm aware that I'm becoming uh, repetitive. It is quite cool, to say the least here. And the rainfall is absolutely incessant, so you'll probably be able to hear that pattering away in the background. So I'm going to jump back in the house and uh, put the computer on, and I'm going to start identifying these plants with uh, as close to uh, maximum correctness uh, as possible. But if you do see a plant which you think has been misnamed, misidentified, or even missold, not by Piotr, but uh, possibly by somebody else, then please do tell me, because we need to get this Gymnocolisium collection identified as correctly as possible. So any comments, please leave about the Gymnos uh, in general, or the, the cacti here at Kirkstone. Uh, please, uh, if you've enjoyed this Gymnocolisium series, then please uh, identify by leaving a like. But more important than anything I could ever possibly describe, is subscribe. It's the subscriptions that allow us to keep on going and allow us to um, keep this uh, hobby well publicized and uh, hopefully do something a little bit different on the Kirkstone Botanica YouTube channel than you find on uh, some of the other channels. Now we try to be entertaining and informative at the same time. I'll just focus in on that uh, uh, Gymnocolisium raganese which is throwing up flower buds in December thank you very much don't know what chance there is of those opening and uh, basically yeah get back to subscriptions please subscribe ultra 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 important for us that you leave that subscription and also that you tell your friends uh, like this Gymnocolisium burkti var nogolens here he's a friend he subscribed uh, Gymnocolisium trichanthum he subscribed this Gymnocolisium glaucum, he's also described. Not sure about this Gymnocolisium horstii. Have you subscribed? Yes, he, he says, says he has. He's nodding his assent. He's also subscribed. So everybody has subscribed to the channel. And that's what allows us to keep these collections growing and to keep on talking about them. So there we are. You haven't seen that Homolocephala Texensis. That's got absolutely nothing at all to do with the Gymnocolisiums. But if you check back very soon to look at the Echinocactus and Furocactus videos, you'll find us talking about exactly that plant. So there we are. I shall leave it there for now. I'm trying to think of a, of a good angle to finish on. And I think I'll finish somewhere round about there.
Okay, so here we are starting to look at some online resources that would support our interest in the Gymno Coliseum collecting hobby in any research that we wanted to, to do into cacti generally. Now the obvious thing to do, and most people would do, I'm guessing, is simply to Google, in this particular case, Gymno Coliseum. And what I'm also guessing most people would do is they would either go to images and you can see that there are a huge amount of images on Gymno Coliseum. And I did say at the very, very beginning of um, Gymno Coliseum 1 that there was probably more information about the genus Gymno Coliseum than anything else. So that would be an obvious place to start. But if you're looking for something more meaty and serious, just browsing images would probably not be the most obvious and logical place to start. And for an absolute beginner who just wanted to read about Gymnoclesium and get some idea of how they all worked, I would seriously go to Wikipedia. There are some very serious um, plants people contributing to Wikipedia now. And the most useful thing about Wikipedia, of course, is that everything is already hyperlinked. Everything is hyperlinked. So we do have a very comprehensive um, species name here. So if you were particularly interested in, for example, Gymnocolisium uriplurum, there's an entry on Gymnocolisium uriplurum. You can maximize the picture. You can even make that picture even bigger. So Wikipedia is absolutely brilliant as a starting point. So I would really recommend you would have a look at that. But following that, quick look at Gymnocolisium uriplurum, you will also see, for those who are interested, that there is a cladogram family tree here that starts down at the species level, which is Gymnocolisium uriplurum. Then you can look back to, to where we were, the Gymnocolisium genus page, but you can actually go up a level for a general treatment on cacti or for that matter you can go up the classification all the way up to angiosperms which gives you a, a cover of what flowering plants are. So the cactaceae are members of the angiosperma, they are flowering plants. They're not ferns, they're not liverworts, they're not conifers. They bear flowers and they grow from seeds. So the Wikipedia page is a really, really good one to have a look at. So I would seriously recommend that you have a look. If you want to investigate any one particular species, then Wikipedia is a very valid starting point. However, I've also been using a particular range of resources to specifically help me put this series together. And one of the first places I looked at was the Encyclopedia of Living Forms. Now you can see how this is laid out. You need to accept the fact that you are willing to accept cookies and then you will see that there are various places you can go. So each of these is highlighted as I move over it and you will see that the, in the Encyclopedias of Living Forms there are 17,590 entrants for cacti. So how does that help us? Well we have a, an opening um, cover page and what we're particularly interested in is cacti so that's where we are in cacti and we need to go to a particular place because what we're interested in in these hundreds of entries across thousands of individual species is one particular group so let's go through the a's let's go through the b's or the c's or the d's the e's the f's and of course we will eventually settle on the G's and there you'll see that there's one particular G 
is a different colour because I go here very regularly and that gives us the entrance for Gymno Coliseum. So we're in the Encyclopedia of Living Forms, the Encyclopedia of Cacti section with its 17,000 entries. We have 176 entries for Gymno Coliseum. So let's say we were particularly interested in Oh, let me just think from the top of my head. Which one would I want to look about? Uh, Gymno Coliseum. I'm spoiled for choice, aren't I here? Gymno Coliseum. Catamarchens. There we are, because that particular taxon has been mentioned. So we have a fantastic photograph there of Gymno Coliseum Catamarchens, former Belens. And we also have a whole amount of habitat data, some of which I've used in the series. And we've also got some synonyms, very important in the study of gymnocolisiums, other names that these plants may be known by. So we see straight away that all synonyms of gymnocolisium pugionacanthum are mentioned. And pugionacanthum is an overarching cover species. Um, a taxon which includes catamarchens, which is why on the videos you'll see I've actually labelled this plant as Gymnocolisium pugionacanthum variety of former catamarchens. So if you read the description, it says Gymnocolisium catamarchens is a local or morphological form of Gymnocolisium pugionacanthum, and there is a biography that you can do more reading of and there's as much information on that particular taxon as you could possibly need. So that's a very quick look at the Encyclopedia of Living Forms. So we go back, if we need to, to Cacti to look at another species. And then back to the Encyclopedia of Living Forms homepage. So remember, you just need to highlight the pictogram, click on Cacti and away you go. Something else I've also found very, very useful is the Cactus in Habitat website. Now this is an absolutely perfect website. I have spent literally hours here. And let's just see how we could use it. So if we go to Genera and Species, it's, it's in Italian, but very, very easy to use even if you don't speak Italian and of course you could just click on translate if you wanted to and now it goes from Italian to Italian. Isn't that useful? Not greatly but anyway in parallel to the previous page we can see that we have a list of genera in this case mostly South um, American genera because that's where this particular team have done most of their research and one of those entries is Gymnocolisium. Now I really really like this. You go up to Gymnocolisium and click and then you have a branching tree which has a list of names in alphabetical order going down. So from Anitsitsi, Bodenbenderianum, Vuenecari, Capelliens, Cardinesianum, etc etc etc. So would any of these be of any use to us? Well, we have done a reasonably extensive coverage on this particular video, Gymnocolisium 5, of Gymnocolisium megatai. And there is the entry for Gymnocolisium megatai. There is a very large list of synonyms. So any of the names you may come across that have now been subsumed into a simplified understanding of Gymnocolisium megatai and the Gymnocolisium genus generally are here. Now what is incredibly exciting about the Cactus in Habitat site is perhaps unsurprisingly these fantastic habitat pictures and I think sometimes when people and this was the, really the point of Gymnocolisium video number five people who only see um, cacti in greenhouse conditions or at shows can get a very very misleading impression of how these plants exist as extreme xerophytes in very very arid conditions. 
So you could compare the pictures of Gymnocalycium megatide that are on this video with the actual habitat picture that you see in front of you there. And there are a huge number of very, very carefully catalogued pictures. There are always um, pictures of the local ecology, the habitat, there are pictures of the actual plants and how they grow. I mean, just look at that plant there. Surviving or indeed um, thriving in an incredibly dry um, lithophytic situation where it is actually growing in almost solid rock. And there are a whole range of pictures of plants in these similarly testing conditions. Now we've used quite a few um, photographs and pictures of the um, habitat gymnocalyciums of the three species that we featured on Gymnocalyciums 5 from this website because it is so good. And I'd just like to take this opportunity not only to thank the team, um, Cactus in Habitat, for allowing us to use these pictures, but more importantly to encourage anybody to go back and to have a look at how this particular site works because it is absolutely fantastic. So just to give you a very very quick uh, reminder there we are it is the uh, Cactus in Habitat site I'll put the link on right now so you can go there yourself and uh, I can't praise it highly enough it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, another site that we've spent a certain amount of time looking at is the Cactus Art online site, which again uh, has a, a similar format. Now this is a commercial operation, which is a little bit different, but there is in here, again you can see the colour is different because I've, uh, I've been here quite a lot, you have a Cactuspedia. And there are a whole range of um, search criteria you can use uh, to browse particularly interesting areas like spines or crested plants, uh, unusual cultivars and varieties, or just curiosity, things that they've thought were particularly interesting that might pique people's imagination. And again, in alphabetical order, we go down through the A, B, C's, D's, E's, F's and G's. And in the G's we have Gymnocalycium. And again, we have some absolutely beautiful photographs that we can go through and again there's a whole range of um, taxonomic botanical and scientific data and some incredible close-ups of the spines and the areole formation and of course the actual flowers of the plants and very very well hyperlinked you can um, look at the at the photographs in detail by uh, maximizing them and you can even expand that maximization just as you can on Wikipedia. Isn't that fantastic? And that's the Cactus Art online site. And again I'll put the link. You just need to go into Cactus Art online, then go straight to the Cactuspedia and then choose which genera that you're particularly interested in. And not just cacti. So you've got, for example, there um, uh, Adansonia, Adenium, Adromoscus, Ionium, Agave, Aloordia, and Aloe. So a huge range of um, succulent and xerophytic plants, as well as just cacti. So that was Cactus Art, another one definitely worth a good look at. And then finally, something which is I mean, just an unbelievable resource I thought I would share with you. One of the pioneers of the Gymnocalycium hobby, you know, an absolute giant in the British cactus and succulent world, is a guy called John Pilbeam. And many, many years ago, he wrote a book called The Gymnocalycium Guide. And this is actually available, as I say, I, I think astonishingly, as a PDF, the entire book. 
So that was the cover, John Pilbeam's Gymno Coliseum A Collector's Guide and by scrolling down you can get the entire contents of the book to read for free. So there's the classification that was extant and uh, in vogue at the time. There's descriptions of the seeds. So if you're into the botany, the plant distribution which is the, the place I got the information about Gymnocolisium genus distribution from that I did on the first video, the introduction to the genus and where the species are found, uh, f identifying photographs, all completely free without needing to buy the book available. So that just search for Gymnocolisium guide using Google and the entire book is there. And of course you can scroll down and look for a particular species that you want to see. So if you're interested in Gymnocolisium chiquitanum for example, which was one of the plants we saw on the very first unboxing, then there is Gymnocolisium chiquitanum. Pictures, text and information. Isn't that wonderful? Well, personally I think it is. So those are the main resources that we have got um, available to us and we keep together all in one place when we are actually putting these videos together in that folder. But as I said right at the beginning, if you, you're not too serious and you don't want to get too much into the botany, my first port of call would abso de absolutely definitely be just to Google Gymno Coliseum, go to Wikipedia and start there. Read through that, start to become familiar with the names and at that point you can decide where to take your research further. There's a huge amount of absolutely brilliant information now, completely free, without having to buy books the way I had to when I was trying to find out about cacti 40 years ago, 50 years ago. It's all available online. It's an astonishing array of absolutely top-rate, amazing information. There's much, much more than I have identified, but I found those five to be by far and away the most valuable. And for me, for me, what I thought was most useful and most exciting was absolutely, definitely the Cactus in Habitat website. Just the ability to go straight to a particular genus, to go straight to a particular species. Uh, again, we uh, we featured Denudatum on Gymno Coliseum uh, video number two on episode two. And if we are interested in looking at Denudatum and saying, is the plant I have just bought as Gymno Coliseum Denudatum the same as the one which is on this um, particular list? then the answer is yes, it looks absolutely identical apart from the fact that this one has a bit, a little bit more sunburn on. And absolutely the last thing that, uh, that I want to show you here, and we will uh, cover a little bit more of this on the um, following videos, is of course the Kirkstone presence on social media. So should I go to uh, Facebook? And go straight to the Kirkstone webpage. There is a huge amount of information on here and you can go for example to the most recent post. I'm sure you all know how Facebook works. You don't need, you don't need me to tell you how Facebook works. It's not new. Um, but uh, one of the things you may not know about is if you go to photos on the Kirkstone Botanica page then what you will also see is that there are some albums and there are a lot of general pictures of the Kirkstone plants actually in the albums. So one of the things that we will discover uh, very, very quickly is the fact that there are individual genus, there are cacti, there are succulents. So if you're interested, for example, particularly in Gymnocolisium, then we would need to go to... Uh, 
South and Central American cacti and any pictures that we have uploaded would be there. So there are various Gymnocalycium specimens and some information in this particular case about Gymnocalycium triacanthum and there will be a range of pictures from different angles about Gymnocalycium tricanthum or Gymnocalycium porcispinum and other Gymnocalycium uh, and other South American ta taxons are all featured there. So there we are. Many, many, many online resources. We also have an Instagram account. But what I particularly wanted to share with you and what I thought was most valuable was the Encyclopedia of Living Forms and the Cacti section. I wanted to share with you the Cactus in Habitat site, which I think is absolutely sensational. Again, just go to Genera and Species and then look for Gymnocalycium, click on it and investigate whichever species you're particularly most interested in. And then finally, the Gymnocalycium Collector's Guide from John Pilbeam. Have a look at that. You will not find more information about the Gymnocalycium genus in literary or book form than you will find in this book. It is absolutely sensational if you're interested in a serious approach to the Gymnocalycium genus. So there we are. All the way from a relatively uh, erudite and biological treatment of Gymnocalycium, but also a lot talking about the um, plant collecting hobby and uh, habitat data. And uh, all available for free online. Please do check out all of these different online resources. Okay, thank you very, very much indeed. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.